Trotters on gate for the sixth. The Cutler final. Here they come. Off and trotting. Hi, Opening. my name is Bill Bostick. I'm the co-founder of HarnessBetter.com, and I'd like to introduce my partner, Frank Catolo. He's a longtime uh, harness racing writer and handicapper, and my business partner. And uh, with this uh, video, what we hope to do is introduce you to what we're calling the Harness Racing Manifesto, which will give you an outline or strategy how to bring new fans into the sport. Now, when I say new fans, what I'm talking about is people who go to the track or go online and, and wager on races regularly. And um, Frank, just wondering why in the world does the great American sport of harness racing need a manifesto? It needs a manifesto because what we need are new fans. Right. When we use the word fans, we don't mean people who just come to a racetrack or, or watch the races on their computer or at a simulcast area and go hip hip hooray, what a wonderful thing to see horses. We're talking about players, people who are playing the game. We need to sell the game before we sell the sport itself because that means business for the racetracks and it means keeping the sport alive. Right, and selling the game and not the sport, that's the first core principle what we call the harness racing manifesto that's what i mean when people say when people say let's create new fans there's a tendency of people to use the word fan uh in a in a different way we want to create more of an audience more players we want to sell the game of paramutual racing ahead of just the fanatic right, right. now frank if you could be um crowned the king of harness racing for just one day What's the one thing you would, you would want the industry to do? I would want them to start emphasizing selling the game, not necessarily the sport. Okay, what do you mean by that? Well, the, the, uh, the game is wagering. Okay. Paramutual wagering on the show. The show is the sport, the horses that race. And if an emphasis on selling telling people that this is a game we play. This is an interactive game we play, and it's profitable, has not been sensationalized. And I think that what you need, they need to do is sell the game, what the patrons do, right. as opposed to just the sport. In the sport, you mean the horses, the races, the big events, all that kind of stuff. You know. Anything that <laughs> is um, a... Uh, that is a, a detail having to do with these horses, the people uh, who train these horses, drive these horses, anything at all should be secondary to the actual game of paramutual racing. Family got away well on the inside third. Campbell's parked out here. Undercover strike three wide right now past the quarter. Then Wishing Stone in the fifth position. Well, you're a new player. Right. Um, so tell us, how did you get involved? Well, I want, I want, to, do, I want to explain it in two ways. First of all, um, I, I grew up in the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania area, in central Pennsylvania, and I consider it, based on knowing a little bit about the sport now, is that central Pennsylvania is in the is a hotbed, in a, a big region for harness racing. We have you know the Pittsburgh area, Scranton, Wilkesbury, Meadowlands, Chester, all those things are right right in our backyard. Plus, every year there's a uh, major what standard bred. Uh, Horse sale. Horse sale. Hanover Horse Farm, right? Mm -hmm. It's right in my backyard, and I knew nothing about the sport. Uh, there were just the only inkling I had was at the York Fair, which is uh, south of Harrisburg in York every fall. They, they had harness racing, but again, I knew nothing about it. I think I drove by the place with my parents and saw the horses going around. I knew nothing what it was. But the, when I did get involved, it was just within the last couple of years, you introduced me to the sport, and it was just by accident. You, know, you I, I, I've known you for years. You, you talked about your involvement in, in, in harness racing. I knew we didn't focus on it, but I was sick and just getting better, stuck in the house. You invited me to go out to Penn National in Grantville and to watch uh, harness racing on the simulcast. So that was my introduction. You just just wanted a, a place to go, some place to uh, hang out for a while, do something different while I'm getting over an illness, 
And that, that's how I got started. And it's important, what's important about that is that's just step number one because that's awareness. Here's someone who lived in an area, yeah. in a state that is munificent with uh, harness racing, breeding, racing, uh, and, the, and the betting, the game itself. And he doesn't even know uh, that, it's, that, it's, no. uh, that it exists. So awareness is number one. Somebody takes him to the racetrack. And what made you feel that wasn't just a one-time thing? Well, I mean, why did you go back? Just for camaraderie, hang out with the guys? Why did you well, go well, back? Well, that was part of it. I think it's interesting to point out the things that didn't attract my attention. Okay. Um, and things I hear the, the harness racing industry talk about. For example, big fields seem to be a big thing. That, that, that meant nothing to me. The big fields, you know, I, I, whether it was six, six horses or 12, it didn't matter. Um, another thing that didn't matter to me is the big races, the stakes races. Most of them have different names. I never heard of them. Um, I may have heard of the Hamiltonian, but that was, that's a little even shaky as far as big races were not attracting me. Uh, and also the keep the big players in the sport, the, the, the winning, winning as horses, the winning as drivers, again, that did not get me. What attracted me to the sport was having what I like to call skin in the game. Actually putting $2 in a race and having a chance to winning $18, $20, $22, whatever, you know, multiplying that money. And, and seeing whether my, my the decision as far as the horse I'm going to play panned out. So you it, came back right. because of the game, not necessarily because of the sport. Not, not entirely not about the sport. Entirely because you, you had a skin in the game. Right. And, it, and I'm finding more and more it's a fascinating sport, but initially it was the game. Strength to the outside. That will take Wishing Stone into it from second over. Opening night now getting shoveled back to fifth. Mr. Herbie gets into the flow. Third over six. Another, another part of the, the uh, Harness Racing Manifesto that we want to talk about, the second key point, is that you have to come up with an easy way to handicap. And in my experience, that was using the traditional way, looking at a race program, trying to figure out classes, trying to determine the nature of the race and, and how it's set up was very, very difficult. And I spent a year struggling and, and not winning very many races. And fortunately, I was having fun going out the track with Frank and some other guys, but I uh, was not winning. And what did you do? And, and wh what was the idea behind things you did to help me get over that? It was a matter of just looking at the game as, as math. Arithmetic has a lot to do with uh, how much you succeed, if you succeed, in, in playing um, without learning word and verse, everything you need to know, everything you need to see, you, you can actually do it. I told Bill, I said, why don't we look at this, uh, as look at the math of the game, because all gambling has to do with math, and if we look at it and concentrate it, we, on it, we know there are certain times, there are certain elements right. that we can use that will always be on our side, will always have a, a better chance of winning than if we didn't. Uh, so right. we, what we did was I, I showed him certain ways, certain scenarios where he would find something to bet that had a good chance to win. Right, and the key thing is it didn't depend on me being able to read the racing program. We got around that. And we're actually going to focus a whole video on this process we call the third element. But it does provide that easy way that someone walking into the track for the first time could actually get a little bit of instruction and a very little bit of instruction and be able to make good decisions as far as what horses to play and potentially win. Walk out of that first session winning. Because there are people who have learned everything and for years upon years upon years and are still not successful <laughs> at doing it. So yeah. it doesn't necessarily depend upon that. In fact, many of those people deny the math of the game and look at it uh, in, in another way. So what happened to Bill was that he became successful, right? He became right. successful I, doing I it. I opened up an account with $26 and over a short period of time grew it to over $100 using this process. And again, we're going to focus a whole segment on, on, on this particular uh, wagering process and look forward to doing it. But that's the second key part of the Harness Racing Manifesto. You have to come up with an easy to use handicapping process. Ice Machine, seventh on the outside, followed by Guccio, my MVP, and knows nothing. Savruga is trying to go coast to coast. One Before we wrap up, is to point out is that um, we're not poo-pooing or, or saying that the sport and the, the, the horses, the drivers, 
the the actual sport itself can't be promoted. You have to do that. And but using the Harness Racing Manifesto, get people involved, and then they'll grow into that up front. Really, it's it's a focus on the game. People learn as much as they want to learn. Once they're comfortable in a uh, situation, and let's face it, nothing succeeds like success. If you go somewhere and you're suddenly making a couple of bucks and you realize this is, uh, this is a fun and mm. uh, uh, not just fun, you're actually making money, it's a successful deal you have going, you'll want to know a little bit right. more about what's going on. Look, people do this with baseball and football, and there's no betting. And let's face it, the people who do bet where you can bet or where you want to bet are far more interested in the game and maybe even know a lot more about the game itself because they have an investment, because it's interactive. And in this day and age, that's a key word, interactive. Get people to, uh, to be involved and get them to be successful. Yeah, so hopefully, Hopefully with this video you have an idea of what the Harness Racing Manifesto is, a way of bringing new fans into the sport. So I'd like to thank you for uh, you know, watching, learning about the Harness Racing Manifesto, and Frank and I look forward to uh, sharing more with you as time goes on. We want to make you successful and introduce you to a great game. Modern Family, Wishing Stone, Guccio flying late on the outside, Safroga and Guccio in a four-horse ball.